So I've got a problem. Well, let's face it, I got lots of problems, but this one pertains to lumber. I've got a lot of it and it's everywhere. It's like one of those TV shows about the hoarders that just can't help themselves. When it comes to wood, I'm the guy that will embarrass his wife by pulling over and picking up pieces from the curb. And because of this, I've accrued a bit of a collection and it's spread out all over my basement floor, making it hard to get around. I got rough sawn lumber, cabinet discards, a uh, whole variety of plywood, my cutoffs from previous projects, uh, construction grade lumber, I mean even pallet slats. Don't unsubscribe from me for that. But with no organization, it just gets stacked up on the floor, making it almost impossible to get from one side to the other without tripping over something. So I'd like to build some lumber storage on this wall here. And to allow for customization and flexibility, I was thinking about doing it using French cleats. So as my lumber collection changes, I can adjust the brackets as needed to accommodate. And then over here, I'd like to put that shelving unit to store all my jigs. So you're probably thinking, French cleats for lumber storage? It won't be strong enough. Well, just sit tight and let me show you what I came up with. So knowing that one of the strongest joints you can make is a mortise and tenon, I designed this in SketchUp. I figured it was a good idea to have multiple grain directions for added strength, and that I can accomplish both with just three pieces of 2x4. Then, when it comes to hanging it on the cleat, I can make my cutout through all three pieces. I just need to make sure that the tip of the cutout is at least an inch or so lower than the top of the horizontal outrigging piece. Then, to make it more aerodynamic and stylish, I can round over the sharp corners. Plus, it hurts less when I bump my head into it. So basically this is my plan of attack. I'll make about 10 of these brackets and be able to put them wherever I need to on the wall of cleats that are positioned 9 inches apart. So let's see if it'll work. They're framing a few houses in my neighborhood so I was lucky enough to find every piece of wood I needed for this project in the dumpster. Granted it's only like 20 or 30 bucks in lumber, so I'm not exactly sure it was worth being neck deep in trash, but nevertheless, I found everything I needed, including two new studs to beef up the wall just a bit. I set the table saw at 45 degrees and ripped down three more 2x4s to make all the wall cleats. If you cut right down the center, you can easily get two cleats from a single board. Then I take each one over the miter saw and clean cut one of the ends, measure out and mark each of the six cleats and then trim them to fit. I transfer the location of the studs onto each cleat and then I mark where I need to drill some pilot holes to mount them. Then I went ahead and poked a bunch of holes in each of the spots. Now it's time to start putting them on the wall. I'm using two and a half inch screws so that there's plenty of bite into the wall studs and I got all lined up when I'm surprised by this guy. What you doing daddy? Hey buddy. I am building some shelves for my wood. Well, I need a shelf. <laughs> you need a shelf? Yeah. Well, for what? For all my stuff. For your stuff? <laughs> hey, do you want to help, Daddy? Sure. Can you hand me the level? The level is right there. Okay. Thank you. And just like that, he's gone. <laughs> I guess he doesn't approve of child slave labor, but isn't that what having kids is all about? I made sure each cleat was level and that each one was spaced exactly nine inches from the next. Whew. To keep the cleats from twisting on the wall, I glued in some torsion blocks that I made from another 45 degree cutoff. I put in four per cleat, and once they were dry, I screwed them to the studs as well, and this really firmed things up. So after sanding the faces, the wall cleats are done at this point. Now it's time to move on to making the brackets. I start by ripping off one of the rounded edges of a bunch of 2x4 pieces. Ten brackets made from three boards each makes for quite a bit of cutting on the table saw, but once they're all prepped, I set the fence to three inches and run them through again to get them to their final width. Then over on the miter saw, I cut all the outriggers to their final length and get them all cleaned up into the same thickness over on the planer. Now I can start prepping all the bracket uprights. So I set up a stop block on my miter saw and proceed to cut about a billion pieces to length and trim them to width over on the table saw. 
And then to square them up, I just ran each one of them across the jointer. I verified the thickness of the 10 outriggers and then divided that number by half. I set the height of my table saw blade so that I could start to cut out the mortises. Then using a stop block on my crosscut sled, I made the initial cut in all 20 of the bracket uprights. Once that was finished, I adjusted the stop block to account for the height of the tenon, and then it was just a matter of making the second cut in each piece and hogging out all the material in between. Before just going ahead and doing all of them, I did a test fit on a couple of pieces. Fits perfectly. So I spent the next several years carving out the mortises from all the uprights. This was exhausting. But having a saw blade with a flat top raking tooth made it much easier. Otherwise you'd probably have to spend even more time manually cleaning up and squaring out each of the cuts. Then in an effort to keep me out of the ER with a gaping head wound, I thought it might be a good idea to take care of the sharp corners on the end of the outriggers. So it's over to the bandsaw to make all my cuts. I cleaned things up with the disc sander, and then to soften things up even more, I went ahead and rounded the edges over on the router table, being sure not to mess with the edges of the tenon. I gave each of them a real quick sanding, and then the outriggers were ready. While I had the router table handy, I rounded over the front edges of the uprights so that they're just a bit more friendly to the touch. Now we're ready for glue up. I used Type Bond 3 because it has the strongest bonding strength of all the Type Bonds, and it also allows for a longer setup time if I need to make any adjustments. I smeared a liberal amount all throughout the mortise, across one of the inner faces, and then all around the tenon. Then I mashed it all together and I started putting on clamps. After doing this ten times over, I used almost every single clamp that I own. I really have too many clamps. Said no one ever. Once they were drying out of the clamps, I ran each one over the joiner and made the back of it perfectly flat. Then it was time to make each one look like a lopsided boomerang by drawing an arc onto the bottom of the brackets. And then back to the bandsaw to cut out each one of those. Then I used the belt sander to smooth out the curves and to sand down the sides of each one. Now that I reintroduced even more sharp edges, I had to finish out the roundovers over on the router table. I go backwards on the ends just a bit to eliminate any chance of tear out. So I made this hideous looking jig to act as a stencil that will show me where to make all my cuts on each of the brackets. I could have just measured for each one, but this guarantees that each one will be exactly the same. Plus it's funny looking and it was fun to put together. The last step in making these brackets is to make the cutouts over on the bandsaw. To get my blade in there, I had to make a handful of cuts and then break them out with a screwdriver. Then I could get my blade in there perpendicular and finish things out. Each bracket got a notch cut out on the bottom too so that it can sit flush against the wall supported by the cleat just underneath. And then all the brackets found their way onto the wall. Now normally the only thing I pull up is to the drive through window, but to prove to any skeptics out there that these things are strong, here they are easily holding up a 200 pound bucket of lard without even flexing a bit. Boom. Then I could finally start putting some of the lumber up onto the wall. And here it is, all tidied up. 
I played around a bit to find just the right configuration so that I could get the most lumber up onto the racks. And that's really the beauty of the system. You can change it up however you want until you find what works best for you. I've got all my long boards way up top, all my cabinet cutoffs stacked up here, my rough sawn blocks in this area with plenty of room to spare, And then over here, I've got like a mixed bag of wood, again, with lots of unused space. Then at the bottom, I have some more longer pieces. Here's all my cutoffs that I use for cutting boards and accents and that sort of thing. And I relocated that shelving unit to over here in this corner to store some other things as well as all my table saw jigs. All the sheet goods that I just had leaning up against the wall and cluttering up this hallway all got stored over under the staircase over here. And I sorted them so I have the nice Baltic birch plywood first and then the mid-grade plywood and followed by the crappier stuff and then, and then the why the heck are you even saving this plywood is on the very end. But all in all, I'm very happy with the outcome. I, it really opened up this section and I can finally move around in this area again. Hey, if you liked the video, please give me a like and a comment and consider subscribing. All the cool kids are, and I don't think you want to be left out. If you want to try building the system for yourself, you'll find links to download my plans for free in the video description. All right, well, that's about it for this one. Take it easy, and I'll see you next time. Uh, I guess I didn't plan that out too good. The board actually pushed the camera out of the way, but I wasn't about to stop the cut. The cut came out okay. <laughs> All the way to the wall though. I guess uh, six and a half feet is my limit. Who is texting me? Oh hey, it's Ethan. God, I can't get this blue bottle open. <clears throat> oh, really? Who's calling me? Hello, this is Drew. Hello? Hello? Well, that was rude.